Welcome back gamers, my name is Pneumatics and this is Minecraft Java Edition with Actually Editions Episode 3. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. So today I figured we were going to go ahead and expand upon this little farm I have going on right here. I want to go ahead and utilize some of the items in Actually Editions to make this a bit more automated. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and make something called the farmer. So with the farmer, it is actually not too bad to make if you have a lot of iron. You could go ahead and turn your iron into Inori crystals and make some blocks of it. And then one iron casing, we could make one of these guys. So one of these guys allows you you to pretty much have it automate a nine by nine area of whatever crop you put inside of it. Now I use the word automate lightly because you still have to go ahead and go inside the farmer in order to take the excess out unless you attach it to a hopper system and you also have to supply it with energy just like any other system you're going to be making in actually additions it's all going to require some crystal flux. So I'm going to go ahead and extend with all the dirt I have I'm going to extend out a good amount of land and I'm going to go ahead and make that farmer after I am done with this. All right, so I went ahead and got my plot all set up. This can go ahead and fit four farmers all together. I counted out nine by nine spaces. So I think this is going to look really nice and work out really nice for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and gather up the materials to make that farmer real quick, which I think is just gonna be involving a lot of iron. As I showed before, I'm gonna have to go ahead and change them into Enori crystals, and then I'll grab some seeds as well so that we can go ahead and get this underway. Actually, you know, it'd be easier instead of throwing Throwing a bunch of iron down, I saw it needed blocks of Inori crystals, and I think we needed three, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go and grab three out. Let's double check that recipe, and I actually need four, four all together. So let's go and do this. I'm just doing this basically to show you guys that you can actually do it with just blocks of iron as well. So I'm going to do this, drop all those in front of that, and it should turn all those into Inori crystals. There we go. Boom, Enorag crystal blocks. Sweet, nice, got it all done. Let's go ahead and make this farmer block now. Let's go ahead and go in here, get the farmer block, make the casing, move that over, and it looks like, oh, we need to get our seeds out. So let's grab those, and we should be all set. Cool, very nice. Let's go ahead and put this thing down. Actually, first, let's make sure we have some more worms set up that will go ahead and take care of the land when we can't because obviously I don't want to have this wasted area filled up with water in any way shape or form so all I need to do is place a worm right here he should go ahead and take up this area look at that I got two more worms these guys are doing a great job for me all I need to do is do that do that and I'm going to go ahead and as I get more worms I'm going to place them down all the way across so we don't have to worry about any of the land needing any sort of water all right very nice very very nice these guys are awesome so much easier to do your farming when it comes to having a bunch of worms to till your land for you and keep it all watered so let's go ahead and place this farmer down I think I'm going to do it side by side I'm actually going to count up four one two three four and on the fifth block I'm going to place my farmer all right, cool. So now we got the farmer in, it actually needs fuel, like I said before. So let's go and grab one of these coal generators or make a new one because I kind of need those over there. So I'm gonna go and make a new coal generator, set it on top of it or right next to it. And then we need to supply this thing with some seeds in order to actually function. So I'm gonna throw the seeds in there right away so we don't even have to worry about it. And let's go ahead and make the coal generator so we can see this thing working. All right, so I went ahead and got my coal generator made. So all I need to do is plop this right next to this farmer like that let's go ahead and put some fuel in it and it should start powering look at that it's already starting to work so what it's going to do first it's going to go and take up all of the wheat that needs to be harvested and then it's going to go ahead and plant any of the seeds it gets over the plotted area of nine by nine all right very cool look at this we almost got a whole nine by nine area already planted out for us this thing is still going to fill up with plenty of power it has run out of seeds so it just needs to wait for some more wheat to grow up to in order to get harvested and it will get those seeds and it will take those seeds and plant them across across the area. So it looks like I didn't do my math correctly. I thought for certain that I was gonna need four, but then I just realized I did two nine by nine plots. So I just need to go ahead and make one more farmer and this whole area will be farming up wheat in no time. All right, so I went ahead and made my other farmer. I'm gonna go and throw it over here and we're gonna put some more wheat seeds in it as soon as that one goes and gets an abundance of wheat seeds so we can use over here. I was going to actually go ahead and make some pumpkin seeds so that we could throw the pumpkin seeds in here 
and see how that works. But I think we are going to need a lot more wheat in the beginning of our playthrough instead of any other crop. So I'm going to wait off on that. And I was also thinking about doing some sugarcane, which sugarcane does involve having to use sand instead of dirt. But that would negate the effect of the worms. So we wouldn't have the worms to go and use all of this cool little feature we have going on right now. So instead, I'm just going to keep up what we got going on here. And also, if I go to do some sugarcane, I'm going to need to have water. So every center plot and the plot of three by three in the center one, we need water along with the sugar cane going all around, which I would have to change up what, go what is going on underneath here. And I don't really feel like doing that. So like I said, we it is. So since we have this lovely farm going on outside now, I think it would be a good time to show off the composter and the biomash because these two things put together will allow you to create something called fertilizer. Now fertilizer acts very similar to bone meal. All you need to do is make some, put it over your plants and it will make it grow faster. So exactly like bone meal actually, but the only difference is you can't just take fertilizer and throw it on the grass as far as I know. So we're actually gonna try that out as soon as I make some. I just wanna see if that actually works or not. If it has any sort of way of making grass grow like bone meal does. So the compost thing is actually pretty easy to make it doesn't take much it just takes some wood and a wood casing so let's go ahead and make one of those guys i'm going to go over here go here make that wood casing as soon as we get some wood and some sticks all right here we go let's go to make that and then let's grab this boom got the compost so the compost will go ahead and make items over time so we don't have anything in it right now we need to go ahead and make some biomass so let's go to make that it requires us making a knife and we need to go ahead and use that knife with some other materials that are plant-like. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and make the knife. So the knife, we need a knife handle and the knife blade. In order to make the knife handle, we need a stick and some leather, but unfortunately, I don't have any leather on me, but that's okay because we have some rotten flesh. Why is having some rotten flesh a good thing? Well, I'll go ahead and show you why. You can go ahead and take the rotten flesh and put it in front of the atomic reconstructor in order to make some leather. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and turn this off. Look at that, we got six pieces of leather. If anything, I'm sure that makes the cows happy. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and throw this in here and then wait a second, what did we need with that? We needed a stick, so let's go ahead and make the knife blade and then we can go, actually the knife handle I should say, and let's grab some iron, which I think we needed two, and then let's grab a thing of flint, which we need one in order to make that. Let's go ahead and do here, here, boom, boom. Let's go and throw these guys in here. And now we have the knife. Cool. Okay, so I went ahead and got some apples for us to go and make that biomash because for some reason, when I click on biomash, it doesn't show me a recipe for it, but it does say that you can take any sort of food with the knife in this formation in order to make some biomash. So let's put the knife right here. And there you go. We got some biomash, very nice. And it used a little bit of durability on the knife, which is okay. But if you didn't know, the knife is actually used for a lot more than just making biomash. We could go and put it with a quick pork chop in order to make some bacon which then the bacon oh wait no never mind i thought the bacon actually did something else too <laughs> i guess not but you can see that it has a lot more uses we can make some pizza we can make hamburgers submarine uh what is that a sandwich submarine sandwich very nice and then we got some french fries some carrot juice and some noodles all some pretty cool food features in actually additions you can make with the knife so what you're going to want to go ahead and do is take that biomash and put it right in your compost so now it says it has eight biomash in there you just need to go ahead and wait for it to do its thing it's going to take a little bit and then it will turn into fertilizer once it's into fertilizer you can take it out and then you can start putting it on your plants so now that we got a pretty cool farm going we have some biomash in our compost so that we can go ahead and make some fertilizer i think I think it's high time that we go ahead and make some sort of farm because we have plenty of sheep and I would actually like to outfit my home with a bunch of carpet instead of this wood. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make something from Action Editions called the feeder, the automatic feeder. So this thing will go ahead and feed all of the animals in a certain radius for you so that you can go ahead and multiply them over time, which then in turn you could go ahead and automate some other things that you usually do with the animals, such as get some leather from the cows, get some 
some pork chops from the pigs, or as I'm going to do, get some wool from the sheep. Problem is, this recipe requires golden carrots. I have gold, but I don't have carrots, so it looks like I'm going to be on an adventure to go, oh, look at that, and we got some eight fertilizer as soon as I was coming around the corner there. Here we go. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use this real quick before I go on my adventure to find a village of some sort so that we get some carrots. And maybe if I find the village, I can show you guys what sort of new village buildings that are gonna be there if there are any from actually additions, which I know there are. It's just a matter of finding a village that has a few. So let's go ahead and throw this on here. And as you can see, look at that, mature, already done. But I wanna go and see, like I said, to see if this works on the ground. Let's go and throw it in the ground. And it does, it actually does work just like bone meal. Cool, so I guess that means you don't really have to worry about getting bones from skellies and getting bone meal in order to make the grass grow like I just did there. You know, I was gonna save this next item for the next episode, but I think it would be very useful for me to have it right now. It is called the Traveler Sack. Since we are going to be going on an adventure to find a village and we're gonna be taking a lot of things back with us, it would be nice to have something that had a lot more room for us to bring back some more items, which this is perfect for that. So in order to make this, we just need some leather, which obviously we got some earlier from all of the rotten flesh, and we need a void crystal block with a chest and some string. I think I have some string in here, if I'm not mistaken. Of course I do, it's right there. Okay, cool, and then all I need to worry about is getting that void block. Now that void block is going to be a little expensive for me because void blocks are made from coal, which coal I do not have in an abundance right now. I only have 16 in there, 15, 11, and 14. Not a lot, but this is a necessity. So I'm going to go in and take all I need in order to make that void block and make that traveler sack. Okay, so here we go. Let's go and throw that in front of that and cool all right let's go ahead and turn that back off and now let's make the traveler sack very cool boom boom this thing is probably honestly one of the first things besides the atomic reconstructor that you're going to want to make in the very beginning if you are like me it is honestly bugs me going down into the cave system and not having this with me so now that we have one i can show you guys what it does if you go in here you have a bunch more room to place all of your items so you could put them in there like that you could go ahead and turn this auto insert on so then when you actually throw items on the ground it will go ahead and pick up it for you and place it in the bag just like that and then we could go and turn that off because not all the time do I want this to be on to be pulling things inside its inventory the other cool thing is you can actually whitelist and blacklist items from going in or out of the sack so say if you didn't want a bunch of cobblestone going into the traveler sack as you are mining and you only wanted the ores you're picking up to go in here you can actually blacklist it so that it does not go in the sack only everything else. All right, guys, and I am actually back from my adventure from going to find some villages. I'm sorry I wasn't able to go and show you guys the villages as I was there. I had accidentally not turned my mic back on after muting it, and I totally lost all the footage. But if you can see the path I took, I literally went up from my house all the way this way. I totally skipped that area. I found that later. I went all the way up north and turned as soon as i turned i saw this village went here got a bunch of stuff found some carrots came back down this way coming back to my house and i found this village so i'm going to go ahead and show you guys those in another episode of the different items and the different buildings and the different villagers that come with actual additions so that you can get a better idea of what to expect when you find a village but now for the fun part i'm going to go ahead and go in here and grab the carrots and make them into golden carrots and then i'm going to make that automatic feeder so that i can go ahead and get some sheep roundup i'm going to go ahead and go over here and i'm probably going to make this path extend out a little bit probably from here and kind of like what I did over there with the farm area I'm going to get a fence posted up probably from this edge around and I'm going to go and grab probably those sheep from over there bring them over here set up the automatic feeder and show you guys how it actually works all right here we go I have all the materials needed to make this automatic feeder I'm going to go ahead and go in here boom nice we have made the automatic feeder and now I just need to go ahead and get some wheat and some fence to get my area up. So what you actually wanna do is once I get the fence up, I'm gonna go ahead and place this in the middle. So I'm guessing this might be around the middle and what you go ahead and do, you're gonna go ahead and place like wheat, carrots, whatever you need for the type of animal you're using to breed in order to get a bunch of them over here. So with sheep, I'm gonna go ahead and use a bunch of wheat so that I can get them to go ahead and multiply so I can get plenty of wool to use. And as you notice, this thing doesn't require 
any power. It doesn't require any kind of crystal flux at all. All right, got this thing looking pretty nice for what it is. It's a small little thing that I'm gonna be able to keep track of, so I'm not too worried about the size. I might expand later when I'm gonna go out and make some more plots for chickens and cows and all that, but for now, this will be fine for sheep. So let's go ahead and go down here and get this little guy and get him to come up and follow us. Yeah, come on, little sheep, don't worry. Don't worry, you're gonna have a good time. All right, up to the fence, come on in. Nice one down. And all right, we got our next guy. Let's go and bring him in here. Come on, come on, little guy. You were such a pain to get. Oh my gosh, he was all the way down there and I didn't feel like making a bridge across to get those guys. So I went and got him down there. And look at that, oh my gosh. See, it already worked with my back turns and everything. Now we have a little gray sheep from the white sheep and the black sheep. So cool, awesome. So now all I need to do is get a bunch more sheep in here and I can go ahead and just let this thing run. The cool thing about this is if it was on a server or whatnot, or if you have a lot of people playing with you, you don't have to worry about this lagging out because it will stop at a certain point when it feels that there's too many animals around it. So if you wanna go ahead and stop that from happening, you'll have to have some kind of system which we'll probably implement later on in another episode to stop that from happening so we could just keep on getting more and more sheep out as we wish. But all right guys, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you did enjoy this episode, episode number three of actually editions and i do hope you come back for episode four where we're going to be going over the drill its augments and the energizer and probably some more things just i just wanted to go ahead and get those at least taken care of so we could finally use the drill that thing is amazing and if you guys didn't notice i have this little hat on my head because i'm actually filming this the day after christmas so if you do celebrate christmas merry christmas hope it was a good one and i will see you guys in the next one Oh, and also subscribe and hit that like button if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Bye!